Welcome ladies and gentlemen to an Age of Empires 2 video and today we're doing a build order for the Age of Empires 2 Bengali's Civilization. Now this is going to be a build order specifically for Arena and it's going to be a fast castle into unique unit which is the Rata for the Bengalis. Now the Rata is a unit which costs wood and gold and so the fast castle into unique unit build is usually quite typical for civilizations where the unique unit costs wood and gold and that's exactly what we have for the Rata and the Bengalis. Now something that's very special about this unit is that it is uh, essentially a cavalry archer except that it can have a melee attack as well so you can actually toggle the melee attack which is really quite nice and um, yeah I mean for this build it's quite typical of the fast castle into unique unit build orders but there is a little twist with the Bengalis because Bengalis when they get to the next stage their town centers spawn two villagers so they do have a bit of an eco boost in that sense and it's quite nice getting those two free villagers and um but yeah i mean we're going to go for this build and now uh, i'll guide you through it so we're going to get six villagers to food as we normally do at the beginning and we're going to push one deer or one ibex uh, it's quite important that you get that nice and early um and i'll explain that a little bit later become very apparent so six on food and then two to wood and then we're going to grab the first boar and this is why pushing the ibex is actually quite important at this early stage is because um an ibex or a deer has 140 food as you can see here uh, whereas a goose or a sheep has 100 food. So that extra 40 food uh, makes the timing very, very nice for this boar. As you can see, this is probably like kind of the furthest away you can get your boar usually. I mean, it's quite far away. I'm sure it could be a bit further away, but you know, it's just typical generation spawn here. And so when the boar comes in, this is going to be very nicely timed. As you can see, the ibex just ran out there. If it had 40 food less, which it would have been on a geese or goose rather, then, um, you know, there, there would have been a bit of idle time there. But anyway, so we've got six to food, Hi. two to wood, one to grab the boar and then the next two villagers came out to go to wood to make four in total Hi. now the next villager is going to be as you can see waypointed forward is going to build two houses and then we'll go to berries we've taken our scout forward by the way once we push the first deer we've taken our scout forward to find uh you know where our opponent is and we're looking for that gold that external gold that's where we want to put our castle ideally um you know if it's not in a good position and you need to put the castle on the stone it's fine we can balance the economy later because the stone villages here will just go to gold instead all right so now that we've got that villager coming out to build two houses and to berries the next villager comes out to build a mill and then obviously goes to berries and then the next villager will go to grab your second boar all right from here the town center the villagers will all go to berries to make eight in total so the next six villagers will go to berries now as you can see i've actually built the mill one tile away from the berries that's you know definitely on purpose you need that space when you have eight villagers on berries it can get a bit cramped a bit crowded you need to keep an eye on the villagers and so having that one tile gap really helps all right so yeah i mean we're looking pretty smooth with the build so far uh, very happy about that now another word about the ibex or deer on this map arena this generation we only have three and i'm i'm doing that on purpose because sometimes you can actually have four which is great you have an extra 140 food very very nice but i wanted to do the build order which is applicable for all arena map generations and so three is kind of the minimum you'll get hey. all right pushing in our deer now as well once you got the second boar in this is actually kind of when you want to push in the deer because the deer is faster in terms of food gathering rate um having a bit of trouble with that one being a very naughty ibex there probably saw what happened to his friend and says uh, I don't want to be part of that um, oh this guy as well is being a bit of a pesky one All right, but anyway we're going to push these deer in and um, yeah I mean the idea is that when we get up to castle age we'll be getting loom first thing obviously we're not there yet and uh, yes yeah, one more to berries and then after we get the uh, eight villagers to berries we're looking very very smooth as you can see we're kind of separating the villagers a little bit to each berry patch uh, like kind of two on each is fine is ideal there i'm pretty standard here we're just going to get a goose lined up just in case so once we've got eight villagers on berries the next villager from the town center will go to the sheep or the food that's underneath the town center and so because you have nine villagers here now you will need to take two herdables at a time um, because you can only really fit around eight um villages around one particular herd herdable so the next and final two villagers to come out of the town center will go to gold obviously building a mining camp and uh then we'll be clicking feud lagers you can see there on the bottom left so we will be up at 24 population and we'll be having a buzzing eco and uh yeah just keep making sure you shift click your herdables 
keep things nice and efficiently smoothly running at the berries as you can see I know I mean there's basically no minimal bumping here when you have one tile gap usually uh, so there's a little bit of bumping here, not too much but you can fix that you can fix that and what you want to do as well on the way up let's speed things up a little bit is build a house using a wood villager as you can see we've just done that there because of course you know you, as soon as the town center um, or as soon as you get to the feudal age the town center will spawn two villagers and uh, those two villagers will be going to wood by the way those two villagers will be going to wood that's spawn out okay so we're near the feudal age when you get near the feudal age take three villagers from the wood line two to build the market and one to build the blacksmith as you can see the two new villagers that spawned automatically they will go to wood and once these uh, villagers are done, at the herdables, they're just going to go onto the straggler tree. We've got one more left. And uh, we're looking good. Okay. Now, the next two villagers, um, obviously, whilst you're waiting to get the food and the buildings built, will go to stone. So two to stone. And the berry villagers, when they're done, they'll go to stone as well. So as you can see, we had nine villagers on food here. You can only see eight here because we took one of them to go to stone. So you take one of the villagers underneath the town center to go to stone. They go to straggler. And uh, now we've clicked up the castle age. These berry villagers will go to stone, as we said. And what we do from here, we prioritize getting horse color and double bid axe. So horse color is now queued up. We're just gonna need a little bit more wood and then we'll be able to get double bid axe as well. Looking very nice. So we're gonna get lots of stone here for the castle. And there we are, we've got 100 wood. We're gonna start to drop some farms. We've got double bid axe coming in as well. And these villagers just stay on track, straggler trees, and they'll just keep to drop farms. Just keep dropping farms every time you hit 60 wood with these villagers. You wanna get eight farms in total. That'll be enough to keep the town center running, but also get some upgrades in the next age. All right, so keep an eye with your scout as to what's going on. Has your opponent gone for a scouts to try and get the relics? If they have, then you have to be a bit careful about castle dropping. Uh, you know, if they've got if they're looking like they're going to go for archers or crossbows to contest the relics, you might want to drop the castle home first. But in this scenario, we're going to go for a forward castle. So we're going to queue up loom as the first thing we do. Because when we do get up to the castle age, we're actually going to take eight villagers from stone and we're going to take them forward. You need to take one villager from stone to build a house to make sure you don't get housed, of course. But yeah, as soon as we get to castle age, we're going to go forward with eight villagers. Now, when you do get to castle age, the two new villagers that spawn will go to stone and that will really help you get those stone income. So castle ages in, we're getting loom, eight villagers from stone go forward, two new villagers from the town center go to stone. Okay, so at this point, new villagers from the town center will go to wood. We want to aim to get 10 villagers on wood in total, and then we'll start to go to gold with the villagers from the town center. As you can see, we've got a scout there, just to keep an eye on things, getting attacked by a pesky tiger, and also, our opponent sees what's happening, but it's probably too late. We can build a house here with a villager. It's important that, because you don't want to get housed. And you can small wall your villagers in if you have to, uh, to protect them and make sure that castle goes up. So I've got 10 on wood. So new villagers from the town centre are now waypointed to gold. And uh, once this castle is built, these villagers will build a mining camp at the gold and collect gold. So very nicely done. So, I mean, that's essentially the build order. Let's talk a bit about follow-up strategies. So... Now that we've got 10 on wood, we're going to get up to about 16 on gold. It sounds like a lot, but the reason why we're doing that is because once this castle is down, we're going to queue up the ratas, obviously, and try and break through. But we're also going to drop a monastery for some monks and a siege workshop. So if you do opt for the siege workshop monk and unique unit combination, you want 10 on wood, 16 on gold, including the villagers that are forward, by the way. And then you will start to go back to wood again. Um, because obviously wood is very important for siege. If you're thinking more towards going to the Imperial Age instead of the Siege Workshop, um, you can stay with the monks and the relics because you you know you want to get the relics. If you're not using the monks aggressively, you want to pick up some relics. You could drop the monastery back at home if you wanted to. Uh, I'd probably stay keeping villagers going to gold and I'd look to buy my way up to the next age. Um, we're actually going to go a bit aggressive and we're going to get fletching and uh, you can even think about getting a bow saw if you haven't already. So guys, that is the build order we're in to our opponent. As you can see, they're actually doing the melee attack at the moment. We're going to switch to ranged, obviously, because they can pick villagers apart and we're going to get the fletching upgrade. And so this is your build order, guys. You'll almost 
be able to uh, afford a second castle as well very soon. You've got five on stone back at home. If you need to rush down a second castle, you can actually get more villagers to stone. Uh, but yeah, hope you enjoyed this build order tutorial. And if you did, do give the video a thumbs up. Take care, guys, and see you next time.